Hey guys, it's Michael Todd and welcome back to the Cult of Vintage. I'm not looking at the lens, so. <laughs> We're off to a running start. So today you guys, yes, if you couldn't guess it, we are at Goodwill. We're gonna get in here, see if we can't do some thrift shopping, find anything for resale or maybe even our collection. We are in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. Now listen, I wanna caution you. This is a smaller Goodwill, so we're going to see if we can find anything at all. Let's do this. Here we go. Well, um, all right, so let's see what kind of trouble we can get in in the Goodwill. So I usually do um, start with the linens in this particular Goodwill because it's immediately too to the right. Um, so I'm just kind of checking things over. I do look for, of course, Afghans. Those are one of my favorite things to purchase, um, as well as linens. A lot of times, so far as like flat sheets or standard pillowcases, I like the super graphic, bright mod kind of colors and the patterns. I'm not really seeing anything, which isn't too shocking. As you can see, it's not the biggest of selections, but hey, look, there's a mirror. I see you. <laughs> oh, I'm corny. So they do have a bin of artwork and we made a jump and now we are looking at the smaller framed goods. And the reason is, is because I saw this particular piece and I could tell almost immediately, you know, it wasn't vintage or antique. Obviously it was made to look that way. You can see there, it is on a fabric. $4.99, that's not bad. I think that if you reframed it in a vintage or an antique frame, it actually would have looked a lot better. Now I did see this, what I think is an advertisement piece. It says the little, Michael, get in focus. Michael, what are you doing? We're gonna apparently stare at all the damage. I think it said the little, the little market or the little maker. Adorable little girl. It definitely had some age on it. I couldn't tell you what the age was. I did think about getting it, but the damage really kind of, it held me back. So we're going to jump here. Oh, we did a double jump. That was somebody else's cart. That wasn't mine. I never get a cart. I never get a cart when I go into a thrift store, an antique store. I always feel like I'm going to jinx myself. Once I find the first item, then... I will get a cart or a basket, but only then will I get a cart or a basket. Now, I will say that I have been to this Goodwill several times, and here's the thing. This, the, the shelves are surprisingly full for this particular Goodwill. Definitely not as full as a lot of other Goodwills, or especially the Goodwill that we were at in the last video. Uh, but for this Goodwill, you know... It is pretty full. There's that milk glass with that gold detailing. I see that every single place I go. So this Goodwill, obviously they do sort their stuff by color. This is cute. It is new, a reproduction piece. But again, if you put it in a vintage or an antique frame, it would look cute. I'm not really seeing anything. I mean, that pottery duck is kind of cute, but meh, we're gonna jump. <laughs> So, of course, we have to check out the clear glass. Now, oh, I see it already there on the shelf. I'm going to go for it. Now, this is, <clears throat> pardon me, it is an L.E. Smith. You can see there, oh, $2.99. It has three lion heads, and I do have a hard time getting it to focus, but each lion actually has a pair of feet sculpted into the base of it. And I do decide to get it. It is, as I have found out, a spooner. I just thought it would make a cute little vase, put a candle in it, or apparently you can put your spoons in there. I mean, I guess it would be good if you were having like a barbecue, like a fancy barbecue. And this is exactly why I think a lot of people stay away from clear glass is because this is usually what you see. We're about to make a jump here, guys. Hang on and boop. Um, however, 
that one piece, that Ellie Smith piece, I thought she was fantastic. It has sold. Let me, let me say that. Yeah. So if you, I know a lot of people have been asking every Tuesday. Oh, there she is. Look, 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 look. Every Tuesday, one o'clock, I do go on YouTube live. It is on a rotational basis between myself, Misty, Thrifter Junker, Vintage Hunter, and Michelle, Michelle Comfy Cozy Living, every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Now, <clears throat> this particular carnival glass, the re I normally do not go for carnival glass. However, the color saturation, it was so deep, so rich. And what I'm about to do, we're going to make a little jump here, is because I wanted to find out who it was by. And I discovered it was actually a Fenton piece. You could tell picking it up, there was a good bit of weight on it. Those roses, they are sculpted details, so it is a molded glass piece. Obviously, it is three-footed. Look, I got a cart because we found that Ellie Smith piece. About to make a jump here, guys, and noop. Those are my sound effects. Why pay for them when you can make them yourself? You know what I mean? <laughs> I, don't know. Oh, boy. I don't know. Oh, this is the rest of the brown aisle. <clears throat> I was very excited. That's a beautiful bowl. And I did see these. These obviously are reproductions. There was a lot of, I kind of missed that little, oh, that little recipe box there on the left. Do you see it? Oh, well. Obviously, these are reproduction. They were uh, powder jars. Not bad. I mean, again, if you have an Art Nouveau, those were in the Art Nouveau style kind of display or collection, they would fit in. Um, I believe they were in pretty good condition. You know, you could use them. They could be utilitarian. And I'm very nosy, so I always have to open things, and it is backgammon. Don't know how to play it. I don't know what it is. I mean, don't you want to know what's in the other cases? And there's another one. And I'm like, okay, what are you? Empty. <laughs> I don't know what you would have put in there. Put your secrets, right? Then we're going to make another jump. Here we are in the passion aisle, in the red and pink aisle. Now, I do see that red and clear, and I did see that in real life, but I think it was a newer piece, so I kind of was like, mm, don't really want that one. We're taking our time. Okay, I'm feeling good because I'm, I'm not seeing anything that I missed. So that's a good thing. I will say I did, and I did see that, that little cooler right there. It was a Coleman cooler. Um, <laughs> funny enough, do yourself a favor and look up vintage coolers. There's some crazy collector values on some of those pieces. So do keep your eye out for them. Okay. And then I do see the little baby planter here. I was curious to see if it was a Relpo piece. Um, so I'm looking it over, you know, it's the A, B, the lamb. Um, it does say it is stamped Japan. So it is an earlier, you know, it's a in between the um, occupied Japan and made in Japan. But it just, I don't know, it wasn't kitschy enough. I thought the sculpt was a little too soft on it. It wasn't special enough. You know, it wasn't cute enough. So I did leave it there. There definitely was some resale value on it. Don't get me wrong. But again, I'm really trying to be very selective in the items that I bring. Now these did catch my eye. It is a little table set. It did have a salt and pepper, a sugar, a creamer. I do believe that there were two or three mugs in there. And oh, yep, I was able to get it out. I wanted to see if maybe there it was marked or had a maker's mark or a stamp. It did not. Um, you know, the entire box there, only $2.99. Again, there is most certainly resale value there, but not the kind of strawberries I'm looking for. And here we are in the blue and green aisles. 
And I saw this little shade and I was like, what, what, what are you? Oh, you're a plug and air freshener. No, you're going to stay there. That's where you're going to be. I'm not plugging you into my walls. Now this piece, at first I was like, what, what, WPF 2004, excuse me. So we're going to make a little jump because I had to figure out what this was. And it turns out it's actually a Williamsburg pottery from 2004. Um, you know, it's a good price if, you know, you're into that thing. This clock was adorable. I kind of, mm, you know what? I should have got that. Very 80s. Uh, oh, well. But the Williamsburg pottery, there is some fair resale value. Obviously, some pieces are going to be much higher than others. That piece, it probably was about a $10 piece. But again, it just didn't really fit the kind of vibe or the aesthetics that I really want to bring up for, for items for purchase. The vase was cute. It was new. Now, we do see this little, I'm going to call it a jardinier. Um... I was kind of curious and then I turned it around and then it had the pheasants and it is a, um, oh goodness, a transferware. It just really wasn't, it very much was a Japan piece to me. Again, I'm sure there's somebody out there that would absolutely love it and it would fit their vibe, their style, but mm, not for me. And then this picture, do you know what it was? It was the color. The color is, is what jumped out at me. It was that fired on glaze. It felt old. It looked old. That Art Deco handle. And I turned it over and I was like, $7. And then I'm like, Ooh, what does that say? What does it say? It's so faded. Even in real life, it's very difficult. Um, it is Avco. Well, you can kind of see it there, I guess. It is Avco. So I did want to look it up. Now, it would have at one time had a ceramic lid to it. I went ahead and I did pick this item up because I thought it would make a wonderful vase. It That color is gorgeous. This shape, again, in Art Deco's, it is actually manufactured in the 20s or 30s. I Again, I did sell this piece. Um, I, I, I love it. That color, those lines. I was very excited. Happy dance. Thumbs up. Yes. Live your life. <laughs> I had to set it down. I was afraid I was going to drop it. Actually, that's a lie. I think I am still holding on to it. Uh, we like to live dangerously here at the Cult of Vintage. We're on the edge. And then I did see this little mushroom jar up here with the little fairy. Obviously, it was very much a, a hobbyist piece. It was still cute. You know, you see mushrooms and fairies, you got to say hello. You got to give them their just due. Everybody loves a mushroom and a fairy. Some more than others, you know. <laughs> now, I did see this little glass souvenir piece. I thought it said 1897, so I was very excited to get it. I don't know. It was one of those dyslexic moments. <laughs> I was like, oh, wait, it says 1997. You fool. Uh... I thought perhaps it might glow in, until I saw 97. Though I will say that there are um, some pieces that were made even through the 80s um, that did contain uranium. Now, I don't know if they did that as kind of like a throwback. I did like the pattern of these, but when I picked them up, I, it was, yeah, mm -hmm. the weight, it's, not, it's just, it's that, uh, it's heavy, but they shouldn't have been heavy. They should have been delicate and fine. And the paintwork was very sloppy. So those are things that you always want to keep in mind. The sloppier the paint, the cheaper they are. And that's just, you know, there's no shade on that. But you do pay for the artistry. Now he did see this set of four mugs. They very well could be Libby. I don't know for sure. I wasn't able to find them. Um, they do have iridescence to them, a little carnival glass, a look to it. And then you're going to see me, and I'm leaving it in because the struggle was real on me trying to get this thing to focus. It was being hateful. And I'm like literally trying to focus with one hand. And I'm like, you can't, you can't do that. There's a glass in the other one. Set it down. There you go. Now we're focused. <laughs> I don't know what is wrong with me. Uh, we're going to jump here because I put the glass back. 
I'm saying, see you later. You're staying there. Somebody else is going to buy you. And then I almost, almost left that picture sit there. Yes, I did. And by request, I'm making sure that you're getting basket shots. That's the money shot right there, guys, for free. I'm not even going to charge you for that. And here's the dreaded block aisle. I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's the electronics, but I'm telling you, just like clear glass, it takes one item. Give it a shot. I mean, you know, you never know. There could be an antique in there. There could be one of your grail items just chilling out in the clear glass or chilling out in the black aisle. You never know. If but anything else, people set back stuff where it doesn't belong. Trust me, I'm a retail manager. <laughs> you know, they could be walking right by where they picked it up, but why bother? Let me walk the extra 20 steps to put it somewhere it doesn't belong. Now, I did see these... Um, they are a plastic tumbler. The owl on it was really cute. I was really tempted by these, and the reason I do believe they are new, but the reason is because they gave me a great mid-century vibe and a buck ninety-nine. You know, but again, it wasn't vintage. Cute little black bud vase. Again, if you're out shopping for home decor, you like the Art Deco, you're needing a black bud bud vase. Go to Goodwill, pick it up for a buck ninety-nine. Who cares where it's from? It did have a good look, and that's all that matters. And we're going to check out the plush. Don't really see anything. And boom, basket shot. So we're about to wrap it up, you guys. This is everything that I got. Yes, it is just three pieces, but I am very happy with the three pieces that I did get. I definitely saw a great return on it. Thank you very much to everybody who did purchase the items. I do greatly appreciate it. I was very pleased. I think my favorite thing, interestingly enough, was that green pitcher. So guys, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do a wrap up here in the car. See you in a second. All right, well, we're back in the car, obviously. I'm kind of pleasantly surprised. Now look, I know that we did not get a whole lot. We got three things. But for me, of late, going to Goodwill, that's a good trip. And I'm really pleased with the three items that we did get. Um, that carnival glass, I'm very excited that it did turn out to be Fenton. I thought it was Imperial glass. I was going to get it if it was Imperial, but because it is Fenton, there's, you know, there's a little bit more desirability to it. I could tell um, that it was a higher quality piece just by the level of color saturation as well as the sculpted detail, especially with the roses being on the interior of the bowl. Um, and when you picked it up, she, she's a heavy girl. She's not playing around. Um, the green pitcher, I believe it's Avco. Um, it is Art Deco. Now it is missing its lid, but that's okay. I think it'll make a beautiful pitcher. That color is absolutely gorgeous. And I believe that is an Ellie Smith, um, the satin lion head. So we'll see. I need to look that up a little bit more, but I did know just right off the bat that I wanted it and it's clear glass folks. Here's something interesting. They don't give out plastic bags anymore. Now, I don't know if it's just this one or if it is a national thing. So do keep that in mind if you were going out to Goodwill and you feel or you're going to be spending um, some money. Make sure that you have a reusable bag or a box. Um, yeah, they're still wrapping. They're still wrapping things, but they weren't giving out plastic bags. Maybe they were just out. I don't know. So keep that in mind. It's better for the environment anyhow. <laughs> anyhow, you guys, thank you for tagging along today. I hope you had fun. I like the stuff we got. Um, and uh, until next time, remember, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye, guys.